Hello my Soccer Universe and welcome to the review of match day 15 in Serie A which was kind of stretched out and I actually managed to watch half a game live but the rest was all highlights. The highlights of eight games I managed to watch. Uh, it's getting really tight up top. It's getting really tight. Sassuolo opened up the title race, at least at the moment when you look at the standings. If you look at the expected standings, Statscast will probably out by the time you're seeing this, or if not, it will come out uh, soon, soon after where you can see the expected standings. Inter actually uh, having a little bit of distance now up top because it's getting tight and Inter is more highly rated than Milan and Napoli. So uh, it's very, very tight, but don't always sleep on the top three. Anyone want to bet on Atalanta? Atalanta is right in the title race, in my regard. They are very much in there. So uh, a, the Serie A is becoming, again, a very, very exciting league. It's also very oddly, because if you look at the standings, we have, I think, it's Fiorentina is up there in sixth, with an almost as many wins as losses. One more win than losses, and you're in sixth place. I mean, this tells you a lot about the three-point rule, that it's very important to get your wins. Draws don't get you anywhere. Look at Udine, who have uh, one loss less than uh, Fiorentina. However, they have seven draws, and they find themselves Fiorentina has 24 points, and Udine has 16 points. We'll talk about Udine late as well. So, again, it's very important to rack up your wins. Then you can also, um, you know, live with a few of those losses in there as well. But yeah, uh, five points if you count Atalanta. It's five points between the, the separating the top four and only two separating the top three. So uh, um, at the moment, if you talk about title race, Serie A is delivering. And it's also delivering on goals because there are many, 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 many goals. Yeah, I'm wearing Bologna because Bologna had in terms of uh, changes very very big victory and thus making it again on me i think this is already the second time i'm wearing bologna which are uh, kind of surprising now we're going to the games we talk about atalanta atalanta started off the round with a resounding uh four nil victory over venezia partially scoring three cope minus getting his first um it has not been very often that venezia has been outclassed this season so uh that actually shows that atalanta really backed up what they were uh, promising against juve very say this one was, was more like a juve like performance of atalanta now uh against a small opponent that just had lost only two nil to inter four nil destruction uh at the hands of atalanta um and as i said atalanta might get clicking also will play a big role how they will do now in the champions league i mean they have a direct head-to-head -head. i slightly hope that Atalanta will make it through in this group uh, but I don't trust them quite in Europe another exciting game there were lots of ex uh, exciting games Tuesday uh, early meaning Fior Fiorentina and Sampdoria where Gabbiadina gave Sampdoria a lead and it was a very weird uh, purple versus red matchup it's almost perfect for Fior Fiorentina in many ways but then uh, Kajon and of course Vlahovic a great cross by Bono Bonaventura and the way he places it he is the goal scorer at the moment in it in it Italy and Sotil turned the game around already in the first half, give Fiorentina a 3-1 lead. Sotil had a big one uh, to make it 4, but in the end Fiorentina ran away and Sampdoria is kind of withering a little bit away, unfortunately. Uh, not too happy about that one. You will get a win for a uh, change, but you know, at Salernitana. Dybala scoring uh, the, the, the opener, 21st and Morata in the 70s, but it was everything. It was expected that Juve would win that one, but you know, you gotta get the win. So pretty good on that one. Uh, if you, um, Hellas against uh, Cagliari, kind of disappointing, nil-nil. Big one for Bologna, where Anatovic had to come off early, but then Svanberg scores the winner, and Roma really cannot find a way back into that game. And Roma is a... A little bit of a yo-yo team like Fior Fior Fiorentina, with the exception, um, yeah, yeah, very much like Fiorentina. <laughs> They're right there. They have one draw and eight wins. <laughs> so yeah, very much a yo-yo team, very much work in progress in many ways. So um, one day good, one day bad. They play now against Inter. That will show us a lot. Speaking of Inter, 
not being bothered uh, with uh, Spezia winning it 2-0. Rather straightforward uh, for them. Uh, Gagliardini uh, scoring the first one after uh, Lattaro assist and then uh, Lattaro himself. Uh, penalty scores it 2-0. It could have been more. Spezia is, let's be honest, not the best team. And then we get to the game that I have watched and I, I was a little a little bit bummed because I, I didn't have a good night and I, I couldn't rest very, very, very well, well on Wednesday. And at halftime I felt so bad that I just uh, I had to give in and it, it helped that Milan was already up at 2-0. However, I think the biggest thing of that game is unfortunately negative news for Milan. Simon Kier had to come off. Injured himself in the first minute, uh, was substituted in the fourth. Uh, long delay there um, that saw him on the ground. And he, you couldn't really see it in the re replay, but seemingly uh, Foley twisted his knee. And it, it's very likely that uh, it's an ACL tear, <sighs> probably out for the season. That hurts. I mean, Milan immediately, I mean, <laughs> I read very, very, very of the, tra the transfer news. Um, they are out for a defender right now and probably willing to spend some money on that one because Simon Kier was a rock. He and Tomori in defense. This is where I breathe easy. This is for me uh, the best defense that Milan had in a long time. Romagnoli, he's a hazard. So Tomori is probably a little bit better than Kier, but Kier, just with his routine and how he is an absolute outstanding defender and probably Zlatan or not. He's probably my favorite player on Milan at the moment. That says a whole lot. So yeah, I really feel hard done by with that one. That seems in many ways unfair to me. Uh, but Milan didn't really have any problems with uh, Genoa. In the first half, they largely controlled the game. They didn't have many chances, but uh, they got a free kick in the 10th minute. That's Zlatan for directly converts. This is the second time this season. Uh, he's becoming an expert there. And uh, yes, it went kind of through, through a wall, but it's very well placed. I want that shirt with Slatan on the back. And uh, yeah, I need, uh, need to, I want to have a Kier shirt as well. I think they'll, if I don't like to get numbers on the back, but these two players, they turn Milan around. I really would like to have a shirt of theirs. And then the magic also continues because Macias started and he was probably the best player in the first half and crowned his uh, outing with a goal at the end of the first half and gets a second one uh, after a nice uh, Diaz Abrahim assist uh, to make it 3 0. Rather easy. I mean, the game went as perfect as it could be from the end. The end. You could take off players. You could give some minutes to others. I mean, Slatan. You could also save yourself for the big Champions Clash. And you know, maybe the same can be done on the weekend against Salernitana. Pick up those points. Great. And then focus on Liverpool and maybe advance in the Champions League or flame out in fourth place. I don't want to have anything of third place. I'm afraid that's exactly where Milan will be ending. At the same time, and probably I should have watched that match, but you know, Milan fan, Napoli, this time playing in red. This is actually a newsflash. One should always say, uh, watch jersey is Napoli playing in because uh, it's almost a crapshoot at, at the moment. I mean, they take the wheel of four for John. What jersey color? Red this time. Against Sassuolo. And that was already last season. A really, really entertaining game. And this one as well. Napoli, I would say from what I could get for 60 minutes, the better team. First half, they could not really get it going, but Fabian Ruiz and Therese Mertens by the 60 minute had Napoli 2 0 up. Everyone thinks they're cruising. No, against Sassuolo, a Sassuolo team that really, really hurt Milan, you're never safe. And Skamaka scored a wonderful goal the way he takes the cross uh, off his chest and then slams it into the internet through the goalkeeper. If you look at the behind cam camera, oh, I think Ospina has the hand up there and the ball goes through. It was with such a force. He cannot save that one. And that got uh, Sasa Solo right back in, 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 into it. And then in the 89th minute, Ferrari after Berardi assist gets the equalizer. And then they even get the... Uh, go ahead, head, go through the frail. However, there was a foul in the build-up, which, yeah, it was a foul. But that was an escape 
a total escape for Napoli, I gotta say, and Sassuolo 2-2, uh, they opened up now this title race. Without that Sassuolo, uh, without the two results that Sassuolo had, there would still be a considerable gap between Milan, uh, Napoli and the rest. Uh, me, and, but yeah, now it's getting closer together. And then for me to take the total L, um, I, yesterday I kind of, you know, uh wanted to say to my wife, yeah you know we could have a nice evening i'll watch a game and then i said yeah hey, i have quite some stuff to do i want to do a video uh is 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 it right because there's now not a lot of games that are happening are that exciting to me and she said yeah it's all right do what you gotta do yeah i was feeling a little a little bit bad because on the milan game uh we really had a we, we were sitting very nicely together on the couch i was watching my game she was watching her movie and and and, and so on and, and and i just saw i cannot do it anymore so yeah um i'll make it up on the weekend i should have watched lazio udine four four eight goals and what a game i mean beto playing out of his mind in the first time, especially the second goal uh to make it uh two two nil Absolutely great, and I love those Ud Udine shirts. I have to say, the all those black ones. Immobile though, immediately pulls one back. However, Molina then, uh, after De Olofeo or uh, assist, De Olofeo is was a player that Milan won a few seasons ago, and now he's playing at Udine. Yeah, I know, oh, what for blah blah blah, same owner. Uh, 3 1 at the half, Lazio in deep, deep, deep trouble. However, they come back, Pedro. Immobile almost had uh, missed a chance to uh, you know, to convert, but Pedro takes the ball and puts it in into the net. 3-2. Milinkovic Savic just five minutes later, a wonderful strike. Absolute wonderful strike. Getting it to 3-3. Three, three. Then Patrick, just a minute later, is sent off with a yellow red. And at that point the point the game is really heat, heat, heating up. Then Molina is sent off with a yellow red. Then Acerbi, it was initially not given. Acerbi scores the go-ahead goal for Napoli. The whole... Uh, Napoli, Lazio. I'm getting my light blue teams uh, mixed up. The whole dynamic is shifting towards Lazio. However, at the end, Udine get a one last uh, chance, a free kick from Forestieri, that Arslan wonderfully places against the run of everyone in the 99th minute. Huge stoppage time, pulling it right up in the corner. It is 4-4. And then Wallace is getting sent off for taunting uh, at the end. An absolute mad game. One that probably I should, I should have seen and I would be waxing lyrically about that one right now. Yeah, I took the L. I made the Ballon d'Or video. Maybe you're the winner on that one. In any case, uh, that concludes what I want to say about Serie A. We talked about a lot, lot, lot about selling. Uh, but let's maybe look very quickly what is happening Uh uh, on the weekend, uh, actually on Saturday, two really, really interesting games. Uh, Roma Inter, at the same time as Dortmund Bayern, which is for me really, really hard to uh, take. And Napoli Atalanta is a big clash. I mean, if Atalanta get a win there, then uh, we surely have Atalanta fully back in, into the title race. Sleeper game, Bologna Fiorentina. Those two teams are kind of also, uh, they, they could go up there. Uh, and Genoa is visiting Juve, and if you know anything, uh, Genoa is kind of the bogey team for Juve. There's also a Venetian derby between uh, Venezia and Verona. So, I mean, there, I can find quite some interesting games, at least for this Serie A fan. Um, the Monday games, yeah, but maybe they will surprise us. In any case, I think it will be a fun weekend in Serie A. I see myself Serie A and Bundesliga very much watching. Let's see. In any case... Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please add anything that you would like uh, to add in the comments below. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.